everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memoria as Donna. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice it's just one of the signs of the Sweet Dream's Collapse. The Sweet Dream's Collapse? That Memo Keeper mentioned the same thing! So it's real. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC Ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The Land of the Exiles, concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, 
But the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and... using the name of Harmony... exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an Emanator is involved. I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role, and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Look here, brother. A little bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly, right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their... Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered and can't sing, it didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds. They should be flying free in the sky. <laughs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. 
but that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean... Birds aren't bored to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because... I... I want it to live, no matter what. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky, only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. 
I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us Dana, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on the small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penacone faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lantmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. <laughs>